Hello grade 9 students. In this video we are going to talk about our worksheet about digestion. So in this video we are going to explain this worksheet to solve it together and to discuss the different questions. And here we go. Exercises and our worksheet. So let's move to exercise 1. This is an extra exercise. So in a certain tube we add 5 grams of albumin. And then we trace the changes in the amount of albumin and amino acids following the addition of the enzyme trypsin. So, time in hours, this table is showing the variation of the percentage of albumin and that of amino acids as a function of time in hours. So, 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4 hours. At the beginning of the experiment, the percentage of albumin was 100 and that of amino acid it was zero percent as time increases the percentage of albumin decreases from 100 to 70 then from 70 to 50 to 20 to zero this means that the time increases the amount of albumin or the percentage of albumin decreases while let's look for the percentage of amino acids at time zero the percentage of amino acid it was zero as time increases from 0 to 4, the percentage of amino acid increases to 30, to 50, to 80, and then to 100. Meaning that all of the albumin, the protein, is transformed or digested into amino acid, which is the simplest form of proteins. So here, if I said to interpret the results, interpret, so here we can deduce that the trypsin enzyme it works on albumin to digest it into amino acids so interpret the results what can you deduce so here at time equals zero hours the percentage of albumin was 100 while that of amino acid it was zero as time passes from zero to the fourth hour the percentage of albumin decreases from 100 to zero percent why the percentage of amino acid increases from 0 to 100? What does this indicate? This indicates that albumin is transformed into amino acids. So, conclusion, therefore, trypsin acts on albumin, which is a protein. Albumin is a protein to break it down, to digest it, to hydrolyze it, to transform it into amino acids. Let's move to exercise one in our worksheet. A student in grade eight suggested enzymes, they are biological incisors that break down substrates under different pH media. In order to test this hypothesis, which hypothesis is mentioned in the text? Enzymes, they are biological incisors that break down substrates under different pH media. In order to test this hypothesis, trypsin enzyme is added into two different tubes at different pH under the same conditions of temperature, convenient time, duration, and substrate, which is albumin. So both of them, they are working in albumin. Both of them, they are placed in the same temperature, 37 degrees Celsius. Both of them, they are placed for about 60 minutes. What is the variable factor here? Is the pH, different pH. Here the pH equal 2, while in the second tube, pH equal 8. So let's move to this figure. This figure is showing the conditions of the experiments in addition to the results after 60 minutes. Tubes C and D. In both tubes C and D, we have albumin. Both tubes, they are placed in a water bath at temperature 37 degrees Celsius. Both of them, they contain trypsin. Both of them contain water. Moving to the differences, the variable factor. The variable factor between tubes C and D. In tube C, the pH is equal to 2. So it's an acidic medium. While the pH equal 8, it's a basic medium. And as you know that, trypsin, it works in acidic or basic. Sure, in basic. So after 60 minutes, the albumin, it remains the same in tube C. So there is no digestion. While in tube D, we have this appearance of the albumin, meaning that the albumin is digested. So first, the 
pick out from the text the tested hypothesis. The hypothesis is the sentence that we highlighted. By enzymes, they are biological incisors that break down substrate under different pH media. Referring to the figure, pick out the variable factor. We said that the variable factor is the pH. Certify the uses of water bath 37 degrees Celsius. Why? Because enzymes have optimum function. Enzymes, they have optimum, meaning that best function, optimum function at 37 degrees Celsius and also it's the body's temperature. Represent in the same table the conditions and the results. Interpret the obtained result. Is the hypothesis validated? Name the product obtained. Let's go to the interpret. Interpret, you have to say, so after we add trypsin or after adding trypsin and water to tube C, add the pH equal to where the temperature is equal to 37 degrees Celsius. The albumin remains in the tube. It persists in the tube after 60 minutes. What does this indicate? This indicates that there is no digestion in tube C. While after adding trypsin and water to tube 2, uh, to tube D, sorry, at pH equal 8 of temperature 37 degrees Celsius, the albumin, it is digested or it is, it, it disappeared. Meaning that after 60 minutes, sure. So you have to mention the time. You have to mention the variable between these two tubes. This indicates that we have digestion in tube D. So the variable factor between these two, the pH, so the pH played an important mm -hmm. role in the process of digestion. So is the hypothesis validated? Yes, it's approved, it's confirmed. Why? Because the variable between the two experiments in tube C and D is the pH. And digestion occurs in tube D where the pH equal eight basic, while there is no digestion in tube C where the pH equal two, which is acidic. Name the final product obtained in tube D it is the amino acids. It's amino acids. So, as I said, the uh, hypothesis in science, they are biological incisors that break down substrates under different pH media. Number B it is the pH. C, since the enzymes have optimum function at temperature 37, which is the body temperature. Let's move to the table of condition. Let's here pay attention to the table of condition. How? to draw it and steps. First, we have conditions and also we can fix it into two. We write here tubes if you want. So here we have substrate, we have water, we have pH, we have the trypsin enzyme, we have temperature, we have time, and we have the results. We have tubes C and D. Albumin is present in both tubes. Some of you are going to ask me, can I put here plus plus? Yes, you can. You can put plus plus instead of writing album and album, you can write plus plus. Water is present in two, plus plus. pH two in tube C and eight in tube D. Trypsin is present in both tubes, so plus plus. Temperature 37, time needed 60 minutes. Results, albumin exists, it remains in tube C while albumin disappears in tube D. These should be drawn, the table should be drawn using a pencil and a ruler for sure. And you have to fill it using a pen. You have to give the legend, legend is very important. Legend plus meaning presence. Sometimes we're going to use minus, minus it means absence. So you have to use plus and minus if it's necessary. If it's not, it's okay. For example, sometimes we're going to add trypsin and there is no trypsin in tube D. So put plus and minus. So you have to be careful for this. Title, table showing the conditions and the results of experiments in tubes C and D. So after adding trypsin, as I said, this is the interpret. So after adding trypsin and water to tube C, pH equal to at 37 degrees Celsius, the albumin remains in the tube after 60 minutes. What does this indicate? This indicates that there is no digestion in tube C. While after adding trypsin and water to albumin in tube D, of pH equal eight at 37 degrees Celsius, the albumin disappeared after 60 minutes. What does this indicate? This indicates that digestion of albumin occurs in tube D. Is the hypothesis validated? 
It is confirmed. The validity means that it is confirmed. It's true. Yes, since the value between the two experiments is the pH where digestion occurs in tube D where the pH equal to 8 and there is no digestion in tube C where the pH is equal to 2. The final product is amino acid. How can we apply a test that determines if there is digestion of proteins or not? We can apply a biorit test. If it gives no violet color, if there is no violet color, meaning that there is the digestion of proteins and or polypeptides. Let's move now to question number two. Question number two, the mechanical digestion permits the decomposition of food into small pieces, facilitating the chemical action of enzymes. To verify this hypothesis, bread pieces, which hypothesis? This is the hypothesis here. The mechanical digestion permits the decomposition of food into small pieces, facilitating the chemical action of enzymes. To verify this hypothesis, bread pieces of different sizes were placed in two test tubes in the presence of the enzyme salivary amylase. As you know that salivary amylase, it works on starch to convert it into mantose. Okay, so let's start step by step. Both tubes, one and two, they contain water, they contain amylase. Here we have bread in tube one and bread in tube two. We have pH equals seven in both of them. So all the conditions are common. While the variable is the size of the pieces of bread. Here we have small pieces of bread, small pieces. While here we have large pieces of bread. So this is the difference. In one, we have small pieces of bread. In two, we have large pieces of bread. So this is the difference. Time is 20 minutes. So after one, after 20 minutes in one, there is disappearance of the piece of bread, small pieces, they disappeared. While in tube two, there is a decrease in the size of the pieces of bread. So the piece of bread decreases in size. So there is no digestion. Here we have what's known by complete digestion. While in tube two, we have something called a partial digestion. So the large pieces, they become smaller. So partial digestion. Represent in the same table the experimental conditions and results. Pick out from the test the tested hypothesis and you have to interpret, draw out a conclusion. Pick out the tested hypothesis. It's simple. The mechanical digestion permits the composition of food into smaller pieces, facilitating the chemical action of enzyme. It's from the text. It's from the text. You have to copy it from the text. So this is the table of condition. This is the conditions we have substrate, which is the bread in both tubes one and two. Size of the bread, it's small in tube one and it's large in tube two. So this is the variable factor. Both of tubes one and two, they contain the enzyme amylase. Temperature is 37 degrees Celsius in both of them. Someone is going to ask me, can I write temperature between parentheses 37 degrees Celsius and write plus plus? Yes, you can. Water is present in both tubes, so plus and plus. Time, 20 minutes, and result, disappearance of the pieces of bread when they are small, and the large pieces of bread, they decrease inside. So the title is table showing the conditions and the results in the experiments in tubes one and two. You have to move to this table this it's talking about the mechanical action permits the composition of food into smaller pieces facilitating the chemical action of enzymes interpret and conclusion so after adding water and amylase to tube one containing small pieces of bread at ph equal 37 degrees celsius the tube showed the disappearance of the pieces of bread after 20 minutes what does this indicate this indicates that complete digestion of the small piece of bread occurred in one. So complete in tube one, complete digestion. While after adding water and amylase to tube two containing large pieces of bread at pH equals seven at 37 degrees Celsius, the tube showed decrease in the size of pieces after 20 minutes. This indicates that we have partial, partial, meaning that Part of the food is digested, not all the food, not complete digestion. So partial 
digestion so partial digestion of the large piece of bread in tube 2 so what can we conclude here we can conclude that the mechanical digestion the digestion of food into smaller pieces will help will facilitate the chemical digestion of food by the help of the digestive juices and the enzymes so here we have to know that large pieces and the small pieces the difference between them the small pieces are digested faster than the large pieces so small pieces are digested faster that's why in tube one when we have small pieces of bread we have complete digestion small pieces we have complete while in the second one we have large pieces of bread we have partial digestion so you have to mention the variable factor which is the size of the pieces of bread so conclusion is we conclude that mechanical digestion facilitates the chemical digestion of food. Let's now to question number three, temperature and enzymatic activity. Grade nine students posted the following question. What is the convenient temperature for the activity of the enzyme? For this reason, they realize the experiment described below. They put the same quantity of cooked starch in each of the two test tubes A and B. They added small quantity of fresh saliva secreted by salivary gland to each of the two tubes. Then they placed both tubes for a convenient duration of time at a temperature that are different. Tube A at zero temperature and tube B is at 37 degrees Celsius. Note that saliva contains an enzyme called amylase. You have to know this. The chemical medium in both is neutral, meaning that the pH is equal to 7. Using an appropriate technique, these students obtained the results shown in the opposite document. Quantity of cooked starch in tube A, it remains at 100% uh, as time increases from 0 to 15 minutes. So as time passes from 0 to 15 minutes, the quantity of cooked starch in percentage, it remained the same in tube A. What does this mean? This means that there is no digestion of cooked starch in tube A. This means that no digestion. The quantity remains the same. While in tube B, as time passes from 0 to 15 minutes, the quantity of cooked starch decreases from 100 to 10 percent. Here we have digestion of the cooked starch. So digestion occurred in tube B and not in tube A. The set represented in the same table. Pick out the pose problem. Analyze what can you include. So you have to know table. Time 0, 5, 10, 15. Tube A, they made the same at 100 as you see here. Why in tube B, it decreases from 100 to 75 at 5 minutes to 50 at 10 minutes, and then it decreases to 10 after 15 minutes. Title Table showing the variation of the quantities of cooked starch in both tubes A and B in a function of time. What's the poser problem here? Pose the problem. What is the convenient or what is the suitable temperature for the activity of the enzyme is it zero or 37 quantity of cooked starch is 143 they said analyze and the conclusion so analyze without inter without indication there is interpret interpret is analyze plus indication here we have only to analyze and draw out a conclusion so the quantity of cooked starch is 100 in both tubes a and b at time zero minutes during 15 minutes, or as time increases from 0 to 15, the quantity of starch remains constant at 100 degree, 100 percent in tube A, placed at 0 degrees Celsius. Here we mentioned the variable factor, but it decreases to reach one, it decreases to reach 10 percent in tube B, that is placed at 37 degrees. So as, as you see here, we mentioned, and also. I didn't only analyze, I added for this interpret for your information in order to know the interpret and to work more on the interpret. So I added this indicate that the starch is not digested in tube A, but in tube B. If I ask you analyze, in this question they ask you analyze, but I want you to know more about interpret. At interpret, it's analyze plus indication. Therefore, conclusion, the convenient temperature for the activity of an enzyme is 37 degrees Celsius is the best 
temperature. So as I said here, they ask for analyze in part three, but I added for this as interpret. So I work in this part three as interpret, okay? So I work interpret, which is analysis plus uh, analysis plus an interpret. Okay, so be careful for this. Okay, guys.